This is Tailgate Talk, presented by Tarpon Blue. Let's take a ride. In this series, we're going to show you everything Texas and its surrounding southern states has to offer, right here from our very own tailgate. We'll take you from life on the farm and the ranch to the big city lights. This is Tailgate Talk. Come along for the ride. Hi, this week on Tailgate Talk, we are here with Bonnie Dredla, and she is going to give us some information and a background in history on the Luling Foundation. So the Luling Foundation was started in 1927 by Edgar Reed Davis. Um, Edgar Reed Davis actually discovered the Luling oil field back in 1922, and five years later he started this place. Um, we're in our 95th year this year, and he saw farmers and ranchers struggling with a one-crop system of cotton and wanted to show how you could diversify and provide sustainable practices in order to educate people through hands-on learning. And we still have programs every year um, on the third Thursday of May. And the sponsors like you guys have helped us to continue the mission of the Luling Foundation as an agriculture demonstration farm. Yeah. So um, besides the actual foundation itself, what was he in? So it sounds to me like he had, um, he has a very big history. Yes. So he actually was in the rubber industry with his brother Oscar Davis. They came down from Buzzards Bay, Massachusetts, and he was a world traveler. And um, after the rubber industry, and he discovered the oil field as an oil wildcatter down here in Luling. And um, whenever he he actually traveled around the world, and was um, that's where the rubber tree farms were in Indonesia. And he was a strong man of faith. Um, we actually have some of the Bibles on display and some of the display cabinets. And, and whenever he discovered the oil field, he was actually completely broke. And he wanted to try one more time. Um, he felt inspired by God to try again. And that's whenever the, the oil field was discovered. It's actually this um, August 10th will mark 100 years of that discovery of that oil well. Wow. So, um, outside of that, he was also, he was big into the arts, you said? Yes, he was a very eccentric man, and he also loved um, music, and he loved um, paintings and art, and he funded, actually, a, a wildfire art competition in 1927, the same year that this place started, and he paid $5,000 for the winning um, art piece. Um, he, he funded that for $5,000 and we actually have it on display here at the office and it's a pretty neat story. But the, some of those art pieces were actually on display here at one time where people would come to the Luling Foundation office and view them. Um, but there is an art collection at the Whitty Museum that they um, rotate once in a while that you can see. He also funded a, um, a Broadway play called The Ladder. And one thing that's kind of interesting is we had a researcher from New York call us and tell us that that was actually one of the, it was the biggest flop in Broadway history. Um, so it's kind of a unique story. But um, he actually had to pay people to, for people to go watch that. Um, but he was known for his love of the arts, for sure. So compared from then to now, so what, give me a little bit of background on what, in 1927, what this foundation did compared to what it is now. So when it first started, um, it's it, it's really neat because it is an agriculture was in its prime, and that was the main industry that people were in, and that was where there was a lot of people seeking out um, knowledge and wisdom in the agriculture um, world. And now today, there's more technology and science mm -hmm. that has gone into um, into agriculture. So there's still a lot of um, like sustainability is a big buzzword now. Well, that was part of the foundation of the Luling Foundation, Edgar B. Davis's vision, um, is to provide these um, sustainable practices and diversify your crops and practices in order to be successful in agriculture. And so we still have these educational programs that go um, continuously throughout the year right. and educating everybody from children um, to adults, yeah. to people who have been in the business. I've learned for, a lot in the last 20 minutes talking to them, <laughs> for sure. There, there's more stories here than we have time, that is for sure. Yeah, sure. But um, we still continue its mission, um, mm -hmm. and this place was actually a million-dollar endowment back in 1927. 
Wow. And um, we still have um, visitors from all over the world. Mm -hmm. We have people here from locally uh, that have never even been here. Um, that wow. We have continue to have um, an impact on more people than just our service area, which I don't think I mentioned earlier, but by our charter, um, we're standing in our uh, headquarters at the Luling Foundation, and uh, by charter, we serve Caldwell County, Gonzales County, and Guadalupe County. And so we've had people from, not only from those three counties, but like you've seen on the map, we have people from all over the world. All over the world, yeah. And um, just our last couple of visitors came from Australia and Kazakhstan. And wow. so we, we get to hear their stories and share mm -hmm. our stories and both mutually learn from each other. Wow. So tell us a little bit about the grass-fed beef that you have. You know, you do have that that you sell locally to the market. So it, that's been a pretty neat thing. Um, so for about the last year and a half, um, we got the certifications to start selling beef in here. And we have um, everything that we have here is born and raised here. And love to show you some pieces of that. Sure. Um, but we have... Um, Everything from ground beef to briskets to picanhas and some different cuts that maybe you can't buy in the grocery store. Right. But everything is, is born and raised here and it's um, grass fed, grain finished, right. and um, very high quality. And so we're excited to be able to share that with the community that's local around here. Right. Well, thank you very much for talking to us today and explaining a little bit. And, you know, we can go out and you can show us around Great. the property and different things. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Bonnie, now we're out here um, at the cattle pens, and uh, would you tell us a little bit about what is so unique about these pens? One thing that's pretty unique about this place is, um, I don't know if you can see all of it in the background, but um, the back side of the, um, you can almost see just some old um, A-frame roof, and that was actually part of the, the turkey pens that were here um, over 50 years ago, and um, they were converted into cattle pens, and then they upgraded the facility um, back in 2008 and what they did was utilized um, Dr. Temple Grandin and her cattle facility designs which she's designed all across the um, United States and around the world and um, she was actually real instrumental in providing some of the details that went into this incorporating the solid walls and the curved design of the cattle pens and the placement of where the breeding box is and providing a safe, um, quiet environment to where it's lo low stress is something that's very important whenever we're working cattle and having right. um, a safe environment for the cattle as well as ourselves whenever we're working them. Um, but that's one of the really unique things and there's a really neat movie right. about her that you'd love to watch. Yeah, we're definitely going to check that out <laughs> for sure. So Bonnie, if people want to find out more about the Luling Foundation and the history and everything that you've gone over with us, where can we find you? We have a ton of information on our website at lulingfoundation.org and then okay. other great places on our Facebook page, which mm -hmm. is just type in the Luling Foundation in your search, or you can do forward slash, forward slash Luling Foundation after Facebook and be able to find us. You'll see some of our current activities. Okay. Um, we do have, of course, currently selling freezer beef continuously, and then we have a new honeybee project, and you can see anything that's new and upcoming around here, or you can see how the deer have eaten down some of our gardens. So yeah. things that are not successful here as right. well, which happens. Uh -huh. um, but keep um, keep in tune with us. Um, keep also in tune with your extension agents. They have newsletters that can go out. Um, we partner with them on a lot of programs. Uh -huh. But um, we'd love to be engaged with you guys and um, for you to learn more about us. All right, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for joining us on this week's episode of Tailgate Talk. Please make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and our YouTube channel. Thanks for tuning in today, and thank you to our guests for sharing their story. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll see you next time on Tailgate Talk. Ooh.